All right, praise the Lord, my brothers, sisters, and friends. We truly thank and praise God for blessing us to come to you once again to bring a word to you tonight. We thank God for all his abundant blessings that he has bestowed upon me. I thank God for being so good to me. He's been better to me than I've been to myself. And at this time, we're going to uh, have a word of prayer. Almighty God, great God, we just want to thank you for your goodness, your mercy, your love, and your kindness that you've shown toward us. We thank you for blessing us to see this day. We thank you for blessing and bringing us thus far. Father, we pray as we bring a word tonight. Father, we pray that you send a word from heaven tonight that would bless the hearts of men and women in this audience tonight. We pray that you teach us from heaven tonight. We thank you for an opportunity to hear your word. We thank you that your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light into our path. And Father, we give you glory, honor, and praise. And we pray that this word will find a place in somebody's heart tonight, that they will come crying out, what must I do to be saved? In Jesus' mighty and matchless name we pray, amen and amen. All right, my brothers, sisters, and friends, it is once again a, a blessing and an honor to come to you tonight uh, to bring a word of God to you tonight. Truly, God is a good God, and His mercy it forever. All right, we're going to ask the question tonight, is there really a hell? Is there really a hell? Now, we live in a day and time when people... Uh, say that there is a hell, and people say that there isn't a hell. Uh, we hear people uh, saying sometimes that uh, there is no hell, and there is no place that anybody is going to burn, that God is such a loving God and such a caring God uh, that He wouldn't uh, put anybody in a lake of fire and let them burn there forever. So, uh, according to uh, a lot of people, there is no place that is called hell, that it is just fictional. Uh, but is there really a hell? Uh, we as Christians, we as children of God, we believe that there is a hell. And when we look at the scriptures, uh, the scripture teaches us something about hell. So we're asking the question tonight, is there really a hell? Now, we heard of the uh, minister or the bishop. Uh, Carlton Pearson, uh, who is well known, he was a, uh, uh, he is a, well, he was a well known Church of God in Christ, a Pentecostal preacher, uh, who had um, uh, made a lot of people famous uh, with the uh, uh, the television broadcast that he had, uh, Azusa 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 uh, a conference. He had the uh, Azusa Azusa uh, conference that he would have every year in which he would have uh, different singers and preachers to come on and bring a word and uh, sing songs. Uh, it was a, a very big event, well-known event. And uh, for many, many years, he preached the word of God, and he preached that there is a hell. Uh, but all of a sudden, he was supposedly have, got, had, uh, have gotten a, 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 what? Gotten a, a, a word from the Lord, uh, that there, you know, that God came to him and told him that there is no hell. All right, he's supposed to have gotten a new revelation of of there not being a hell. So we are very much aware of him, and he is, of course, today teaching uh, the same doctrine of uh, no hell. But the, what does the Bible teach about hell? Did Jesus mention anything about hell? Uh, are we to believe in hell, or are we to believe that hell is is fictional? Uh, so let's go to the word of, of, of the Lord tonight and, and see what the Bible has to say about hell. Now the very word hell uh, is, is uh, the word in the Greek, Hades. And uh, in, in, uh, in the Greek is Hades, but uh, in, the, uh, in, Hebrew, in Hebrew it is called Sheol. All right? So hell and Sheol uh, is... Uh, let's, let's put it this way. So hell and Hades uh, is hell. All right? Because the Hebrews saw uh, hell as Sheol and the Greeks saw hell as Hades. And uh, they uh, saw it as the place of the dead. All right? A place of uh, torment. Uh, okay? So uh, we, we know that that they did believe that there was a literally hell. All right? And so uh, the Bible 
uh, teaches that there is a hell. Jesus had a lot to say about uh, about hell. Uh, so if Jesus uh, said that there is a hell, then there must be a hell. All right? So the question is, is there really a hell? And the answer, yes, there is really a hell. And hell has been prepared for all of those who have chosen to go against the word in the will of God. All those who have chosen to disobey the word of God and not accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And so all of you out here that are saying that there is no hell and that God is, is, such a, is a God of love and uh, he wouldn't uh, put anybody in hell or suffer anybody to be in hell eternally, uh, you are deceived. And you are a bunch of liars, all right? Because Jesus said himself that there is a hell. And we, we as, 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 as people, uh, must stop seeing God as being a one-sided God. See, that's the problem in this day and time. Uh, we want to see God as one-sided. We, we want a, a, a right-hand God, but we don't want a left-hand God, all right? We want a God of the good, but we don't want to see a God of the bad. We want to see a God of the love, but we don't want to see a God of the wrath. All right, but God is two-handed. He's a He has a right hand and a left hand. He has a right hand of love, but he has a left hand of wrath. All right, and and too often church folk, even church folk, uh, want to make God right-handed and not right and left-handed. They want to talk about the God of love and not the God of wrath. But he is a God of love and he is a God of wrath. And he uh, has sent his son uh, to give us eternal life. And we are in the period of grace where uh, Jesus has come and he is a lamb. All right? He has come and he is the lamb of God. But the day is coming when he's going to be the lion of God. All right, he's going to be the lion of Judah. So too many of us want to see him as a lamb and not a lion. But he is a lamb, a lamb and a lion. All right, let's understand that. So yes, there is really a hell. Now let's take a look at some of the scriptures where Jesus talked about a hell. Let's go to Matthew Chapter 10, verse 28. Let's take our Bibles and go to Matthew chapter 10, verse 28. And we're asking the question tonight, is there really a hell? Matthew chapter 10, verse 28. And this is what it says. And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul. But rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Let's take a look at that again because Jesus is talking here. And he said, and fear not them which kill the body. So we see that man is able to kill your body, but he is not able to kill your what? Your soul. All right. Your soul is eternal. So man cannot kill your soul. Now we have to understand that the soul and the spirit are connected. And the only somebody that can divide the soul from the spirit is, is the word of God, is Jesus himself, all right? So when you die, your body goes back to dust, but your soul and your spirit are intertwined and they live forever. But God is able to separate your soul and the spirit, all right? Understand that. So he said, and fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul. So man can kill or destroy your body, but he cannot touch your soul. But rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. So we are to fear him who is him, that's Jesus. He is able to destroy both our body and our soul in hell. Now the Jehovah Witnesses will tell you that that uh, that uh, uh, that that man doesn't have a soul, that man is a soul. Let me say that again. Those fake and false Jehovah's Witnesses would tell you that they're truly, they're really not Jehovah, Jehovah's Witnesses because if they were God's Witnesses, they wouldn't be telling lies. They wouldn't be lying. All right? You cannot be a witness of God and be a liar. All right? So the Jehovah's Witnesses would tell you that man doesn't have a soul 
that man is a soul. But let's take a look at this scripture again and see the liars that they are. And fear not them which kill the body. All right, so he, he makes a distinction between the body and the soul in this scripture. And fear not them which kill the body. There's the body, that's one but are not able to kill the soul, all right? So that, that the body and the soul are distinct there. There are two different things there, all right? But rather fear him which is able to destroy both. Both means what? Well, anytime you got both, that means you got two. You cannot have both unless you have two of something. So fear, not, fear him who is able to destroy both, the body and the soul, all right? Both body and soul, or both soul and body, where? In hell. So we see right there in verse 28 that Jesus say that there is a hell. All right, now, let's leave there and go to, um, let's go to, uh, stay in that same book and go to Matthew chapter 13, verse 42, and see what Jesus has to say about hell in Matthew 13, chapter verse 42. And we're still asking the question, is there really a hell? Matthew, Matthew 13, verse 42. This is what it says. Let's, let's start at verse uh, uh, 41. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend. All right, now right now in the kingdom of God, Let's, let's finish reading this, and then I'll come back with those comments. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and them which do iniquity. All right? So it says that the Son of Man, who is the Son of Man? Jesus Christ, he, he is the Son of Man, and he is the Son of God. All right? He is 100% man, and he is 100% God. So the Son of Man is going to send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom. They shall gather out of his kingdom. So where is the kingdom of God? Jesus said the kingdom of God is within you. And then he said the kingdom of God is at hand. All right, so what is he talking about? Well, he's talking about this earth. He's talking about this earthly kingdom. He's talking about the good and the bad that is included in this kingdom, in this world. All right? Uh, everything in this kingdom is not of God. There are some people who claim to be in the kingdom of God that are in the physical church, that are in the physical church building who are not in the kingdom of God. All right? They are in the king they're in the earthly kingdom but they're not in the heavenly kingdom. They haven't been born again. And this is why I often tell you that except you are born again, you're not in the church. Now, you might be in the church building, but you're not in the church body. There is a distinction between you being in the church building, which we call sometimes the house of God. That's the physical church. Anybody or anything can go in that building. All right? <coughs> Excuse me. But anything or anybody cannot go in the building or the body of Christ, which is the organism. See, the church is not a a building, it's a body, it's an organism, it's a living organism, all right? In which Jesus Christ is the head, and we are the body. We are, we are the members of the body. And the only way you can get in the body of Christ, you have to be born again. And too many times, we see people going to the altar. Too many times, we hear, we hear people repeating something that somebody tells them to repeat. And people think that just because they made that, uh, uh, that, that, that speech or they repeated those words after the preacher or after someone who's trying to get them saved, people too many times we think that that person is saved because they repeated what we told them to repeat. But oftentimes that doesn't happen. That doesn't happen. Even though they, they, they uh, made that declaration, they didn't mean it from their hearts. They were not ready to give up the world. They were not ready to give up the up the uh, up the devil and his kingdom. And so no no regeneration took place. Listen people, let me let me say something to you tonight. Just because you repeat something does not give you salvation. You got to you got to mean that from your heart. It has to be in your heart. 
All right? For salvation to take place, for salvation and regener regeneration, sanctification, rejuvenation, all right, uh, uh, transformation, for that to take place in your life, that has to be in your heart. And then you get born from above. Something happens to you from above. God takes his spirit and wash you and make you a new creation. You get born from above. And so that has to happen. We just can't believe just because somebody quoted something or somebody uh, repeated something that you said that they are saved. Many times, that is not the case. It has to be some salvation and some regeneration to take place in your life. So everybody is not in the kingdom of God. So what God is going, what Jesus is going to do, he's going to send his angels and they're going to gather, gather out everything that offends in the kingdom of God. What do you mean by offend, Brother Harrison? What I mean is that everything that is not like God, everything that goes against the word of God and goes against the spirit of God and the power of God, all right? Or everybody that goes against the word of God, everybody that is not saved, that's what it means by everything or all things that offend. And them which do what? Iniquity. Iniquity is hidden sin. We got a lot of people who claim to be Christians, but they are hiding sin in their hearts. Instead of hiding the word of God in their hearts that David said that, that he does, all right? You remember King David said, uh, 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 your word, uh, oh, oh Lord, your word I've hidden in my heart that I might what? I might not what? Sin against you. What a lot of people have not hidden the word of God in their heart. They, they have hidden sin in their hearts. They have iniquity in their hearts. They haven't allowed the word of God to come in and change them and to save them. So everything that offends in the kingdom of God and those that do iniquity, God is going to get out of his kingdom. All right. Look at verse 42. And shall cast them into a furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. All right. So he said he's going to get everything out of his kingdom that offends and those that do iniquity and shall cast them into where? The lake of fire, into hell. So here Jesus says again that he's going to put those that are disobedient, those that are not living a clean and a holy life, those that have not been born again and walking in the word, keeping his commandments, he said he's going to throw them in the fire. Jesus said that. Now who are you going to believe? Are you going to believe Jesus? Or are you going to believe false prophet Carlton Pearson and all these other false preachers and so-called prophets that are not of God but are of Satan who claim or say that there is no hell. We're going to choose to believe the word of God. That's who I'm going to choose to believe. All right, now let's go to um, uh, Matthew 25. Let's go to chapter 25 and look at verse 46 and see what Jesus had to say. So we see many times in the scripture that Jesus said that there is a hell. We're not concerned about what anybody else said. We're concerned about what Jesus said. All right? Let every man be a liar, but let God be true. All right, Matthew 25 and 46. Let's take a look at it and see what it says. All right, it says, um, And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. All right, now let's back up to verse 40, 44. Then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee a hunger, or a thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, or did not minister unto thee? Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye did it not to one of the least of these, ye did it not to me. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. Now, Jesus said, these shall go into everlasting punishment. Now, I had a lady on a couple of weeks ago that I was talking to, uh, trying to get her saved because she is a church member, and she thinks that she's saved, and I was trying to get her saved, trying to help her. And uh, uh, I had said to her that, uh, you know, she said uh, she's she said that she's a Christian, but she's not going to give up her gambling. 
And I said to her, you know, you have to be willing to give up everything for the Lord Jesus. The gambling is wrong. And uh, we got to continue to talk about the conversation. And she made mention, she said, um, I don't believe that God is going to put anybody in the lake of fire and let them burn there forever. I, I don't believe that. Now, she's supposed to be going to a Bible-believing church. But she's holding on to some Jehovah Witness teaching that she uh, learned years and years ago. But she's supposed to be a born-again believer. So we have people like this in the church who don't believe the Word of God. You can tell them the Word of God. You can show them the Word of God. But they still won't believe it because they're not saved. See, it's either you believe what God said, you believe what Jesus said, or you, you just don't, you're, you're an unbeliever. All right? You're an unbeliever. You, you, cannot, you cannot be saved and not believe the Word of God. It doesn't matter how you think about what you think about it and how you feel about it. I don't believe God is, is, is that kind of God. It, it, it's not based on what you believe. It's based on what the Word says. Jesus cannot lie. Let every man be a liar, but let God be true. See, Jesus cannot lie. He said that he's going to cast them into everlasting fire. He said in verse 46, and these shall go into everlasting punishment. Everlasting. You know what everlasting means? It means everlasting. It means continuously. It means no end. It means eternally. That's what it means. All right? So we have to believe the word. All right, my brothers, sisters, and friends, we're going to stop right here, and we're going to come back with part two talking about or asking the question, is there really a hell? We'll see you in a little bit. God bless.